Ladies and gents, welcome back to Oz Game as you are here once again with Stephen Farrelly. I have Mr. Mike Reed, who is the producer on Crisis 3. He's come all the way out to Australia to uh, chat to us today about, um, I guess, one of the bigger games. It's dropping early part of the year. That uh, lull in the early part of the year this, these days doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. It's all about that post-Christmas kind of thing. Um, for you guys, was it important to kind of strike while the iron's still hot? You know, like the holiday period is really good. And I know maybe internally the marketing thing doesn't really necessarily affect you guys, but February seems to be like a bit of a hot month this, you know, this time. Yeah, February is pretty hot right now. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about February really being the target for quite some time. Uh, and we've actually stuck to that and recently announced a date of, of February 19th in the U.S. and February 21st in Australia. So it's, I mean, there, there's definitely a lot in there between, you know, I mean, Dead Space is coming and Bioshock and all of these other, all of these other games that are coming in that period. Um, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it's interesting. I mean, that's, that's always where we've been kind of sitting at yeah. and within the targets that we've stuck to and we're going to deliver on that. Are you guys comfortable with where you're at, um, heading into the home stretch? Absolutely. Yeah. We're in, we're in great shape right now. Uh, we're just coming up on the home stretch and, and, and hitting into the, hitting into the final days yeah. and, and in that point. So, uh, but from everything I've seen so far, I mean, the game is looking really good. We're stable. The art looks great. It plays really well. And we're we're sitting in a really great position right now. You mentioned in the presentation earlier that um, you know you had some alpha multiplayer stuff going on, uh, and the feedback really helped you guys. Can you elaborate a bit more on what that feedback was? Um, I actually just got it last week, so I haven't, and I've been traveling quite a bit, so I've only reviewed it in a very base form. Um, but in terms of like things, uh, just basic game, gameplay things that we've we've come back with, with um, you know things like pe certain things people thought were were maybe more difficult or didn't understand. Uh, taking a look at those, I mean, we really want to support the multiplayer moving forward into this, and I think people were kind of surprised at what we were doing. Like the first day after the alpha was out, we went patch almost every single day through. Throughout that, eventually uh, releasing, we decided last minute to throw the bow in as a last minute yeah. thing, and people really uh, responded to that too. That was more of a technical test more than anything, but it was interesting to see some of the feedback we got from that. And we're going to continue to heavily support that as well, well into the beta, and then of course uh, after into and after release as well. Did you have uh, feedback that you can even recall relating to, I guess, modes that people thought might have worked a bit better based on the stuff that you guys actually have in the game? Um, so, I mean, the, a, a big focus, of course, was Hunter uh, was on Hunter um, and Crash Site as well, which we which we showcased publicly at, at Gamescom. So there was a lot of stuff done in that. Um, I can't really speak too much to the other game modes, but I mean, there's going to be some of the standard ones in there to like deathmatch and team deathmatch, yeah. which I mean, are, we we pretty much know enough about at this point. It's when you start bringing in these new game modes that we really have to take a good look at them and go, are these fun? Are they easy to get into? And you know, are people really going to enjoy them? Uh, now you mentioned dedicated servers. It's a really amazingly fantastic word. Um, well, um, thing for us here in Australia, uh, PC only. Obviously, the consoles still aren't necessarily up to scratch with that anyway. Peer to peer seems to be the way forward. Even though the guys at Epic did do a test bed for um, dedicated servers for Gears 3, which they said worked out really well. So hopefully, moving forward in the next gen, we might start seeing a bit more of that. But for you guys, what's the importance of something like that supporting the PC community in, in a way like that? For dedicated servers specifically, so yeah, that's. I mean, it's huge. I mean, I'm a PC gamer myself, and I understand the importance of, of dedicated servers, and I understand what the frustrations have, have come from on console. I mean, we've seen a number of games come over over the. I mean, even like 10 years ago, with I remember, uh, you know, Unreal uh, Unreal Tournament on the on the Xbox. Um, you know, had had some. There was some frustrating things that had happened with that, especially with the peer-to-peer -peer stuff. And you see later things with like Battlefield, with like you know having having larger number of players in these games, and not. I mean, that's not a great peer-to-peer -peer kind of situation. Um, but moving forward, I mean, it's. I mean, especially on the on the console side, I mean, it's it's a little more tricky uh, to add on to that front, and it can also be very costly and time-consuming. Whereas the scalability on the PC side is definitely much easier for us. Now, when you say dedicated servers, will we actually have servers here in Australia? How, what's the model? I don't know what the region stuff is specifically. I don't, so I don't want to, you know, comment on that. But I mean, you know, with us coming down here and and you know whatever the marketing and technical support ends up being, I mean, you know, it's definitely something that we should have in there. But uh, you know, our our infrastructure has completely changed over what we did in Crisis too. So I, I'd I'd hope that we'd see something down here as well. Okay. So moving forward, uh, let's jump into the single player. You brought profit back. Um, uh, you've got some pretty cool, I guess, 
well, I don't want to use the word transmedia, but you know, you got Albert um, Albert Hughes in to come and do some stuff with that. What was I mean? Obviously, there's a lot of um, support and passion within uh, Crytek for this universe that you guys have created. Things usually end in threes and trilogies. You know, what's kind of what's what's going on here? So if we look back at 2007, Shabbat basically came out and said, Crisis is going to be a trilogy. And, you know, I mean, here we are with Crisis 3. We managed to make it to the end of the trilogy. But if you look at over the past five years and what Crytek has done with the Crisis franchise as a whole, we've really... Um, We've really developed the IP in, in some really great ways and really not doing a lot of crazy damaging stuff and going off in a bunch of different directions. Um, so in terms of like what we're doing in Crisis 3, I mean, this is, this is sort of the closure to this sort of story bubble. But if you look at the past five years and what we've done with the franchise, I mean, you could, you could probably come up and say, uh, you know, like we basically have built a Crisis universe. And we can go in so many different ways with this franchise at this point and even alternate storylines to, you know, different tech to different sort of realities and things like that. So, I mean, moving past Crisis 3, I mean, you know, we have a lot of opportunities moving forward outside of this. Could you foresee yourselves handing it over to another developer in the same way Epic did with Gears, you know, giving it over to the, uh, uh, People Can Fly? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think this is something... I mean, cri crisis, and, crisis is something that, that has really helped build uh, Crytek to what it is today. I mean, from the, from the from the CryEngine two with Cry with uh, the original Crisis to what we've done with with the CryEngine three and and the number of licensees and and how we're continuing to grow out that uh, in 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 terms of film and games and architecture and all of these different facets. Uh, you know, we're we're moving in a, in quite a number of different directions. Across, like talking about a trilogy, across one and two and even you know Far Cry before that. Um, going into three, what do you think was the the, the studio kind of cadence? What was what was the the lesson learnt across all of that development? I mean, it's years and years of development. You know, you, you you're coming across a new engine, all these types of stuff. I guess from a philosophical point of view, what's the number one thing you guys have brought to the table with this one? Wow, that's really not an easy thing to do. I mean, they were they were vastly different games in a, in a lot of different ways. I think the biggest lesson uh, out of all of those games when we come to it was was really Crisis Two, and I think a lot of people were very skeptical in our ability to be able to deliver for consoles and actually make the engine work for consoles and have a successful title on that front. Um, that was really one of the biggest things that we've done. Uh, coming back in Crisis 3, there's a lot of different elements that we have from Crisis 1 and Crisis 2 that we've sort of rolled back on. And it's that rollback mixed with the hunter theme, with the jungle themes, and, and the introduction of the bow, sort of just fit in with all of these different things that, that, we, had, that we had to offer on that front. Um, so that's that's really where we're at with it. We wanted to we wanted to come and find a middle ground between the two, but not focus on one thing as you know solely graphics or solely gameplay or solely audio or, or cinematics. But all of these things have been brought up to an equal level to create a great overall game experience. Now, obviously, the game looks fantastic even on console. Um, you guys have managed to get a lot of power out of these you know aging beasts. You know the the three sixty has been around for seven years now. It's like it's pretty amazing. Um, and you know, Shavat at uh, Games Gamescom actually said to me, "If you want to, this can melt your PC." He actually said that, and we got an awesome flood of. Uh, oh, you were the guys that did that. Okay, okay, I remember this. I remember this. And now, so if, if you look at that, I mean, you, you guys had taken that and ran with it. And Shavat wasn't lying at the time, and he's still not lying now. Because we didn't take it out of context. We, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I don't think it was taken out of context because I know that he would say something like that. And, and so when we did the closed alpha in October, November for the multiplayer, a lot of the tech sites had picked up on it and gone, hey, let's, let's put this to the test and see if it really is. And all the feedback that was coming back, they were like, yeah, this really is pushing PCs really, really hard. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's something that, you know, we, we want to push technology forward, and the PC is really our way to do that at this point. I mean, we're, we're definitely feeling the strain of consoles, um, not only on the hardware side, but in the way that their certification programs work and, and really, you know, having to deliver stuff way ahead of time. And there's a lot of variables on consoles and things that they want you to deliver uh, beforehand, whereas we're very freeform on what we can do on PC and, and locking the abilities of some of this high-end hardware. And we wanted to be able to push that. But we still want to provide a great gameplay experience across the board for both consoles and PCs. Well, actually, that was going to be my next question was, you guys must be excited that, you know, I mean, it's sort of get, you, you sort of see a trend in the industry where PCs kind of leap ahead, consoles come to die, 
And then because these PCs are so far ahead, the next generation of consoles are actually kind of at that level or a little bit further ahead as well. And then you get that cycle again. I mean, you probably can't talk at all about the next gen, but you guys must be excited that you'd be able to see sort of the, the PC visuals. That no, I mean, you know, we're, we're, I think everybody's excited about the next gen. I think, I think across all of the companies in the last, in the last year or so have made uh, comments in regards to next generation hardware and how we really, really want to get our hands on it. But there's a lot of other interesting things that are starting to come into play with, uh, you know, I mean, Sony's purchase of Gaikai for, for cloud technology, um, NVIDIA's grid technology as well for, for server side uh, streaming of stuff like that and where where things could potentially go in the next five to ten years I mean is is I mean it, it always ends up you know like the old days of beta and VHS and it's all up to the consumer at the end of the day so I mean it's we, we really want to keep ahead of that and keep on top of the technology and keep pushing that technology and I think our engines helping us do that quite a lot can you foresee this like existing like CryEngine 3 in its current form right through you know for the next four years, five years? That's really more up to the R&D teams. I mean, you know, people have asked about, where's CryEngine 4? Where's CryEngine 4? Um, you know, that's really up to the R&D guys as to how they're doing it. I mean, I, I, when you look at CryEngine 3 of what we had at the release of Crisis 2 to all of the work we've done on it up until now, I mean, there's an enormous amount of, uh, there's enormous amount of changes. I mean, you can see it in the visuals and stuff that we've done uh, over that time frame to, to really beef up Crisis 3. All right, so we'll wrap it up there, but uh, before I go, your favorite uh, thing, the, 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 the favorite moment, the favorite weapon, the favorite component of this game that, that just resonates with you? It's really the fast pace of it. I mean, I love playing this in a fast pace kind of Twitch scenario, and it's really, especially with the bow too, trying to figure out how to jump over things and you know pulling the bow at the same time and getting those awesome shots or sliding down things and turning corners with your shotgun and just opening fire on guys. It's really just that pace and also try, just going in and trying different ways to play through these action sequences and seeing how the AI reacts in all these different ways. And that's what I've been experimenting in a lot with, uh, with some of the latest builds. And I think that part of it's really coming together quite nicely. All right. Well, I'll agree with you so far, Mike, until I actually get the game fully. But yeah, yeah it's looking really good. Thanks very much for your time today. Cheers.